And so it's kind of, I don't know, it's a little embarrassing if I observe how our government is run and these arguments and positions and like foreign policy, like none of it makes sense to somebody who understands how to think for themselves outside of that box and has gone through the trouble to fill in the blanks and ask and answer the questions. I mean, it's, it's very frustrating because if it was just theater, if it was just a, if it was a, a soap opera, I'd turn it off. I'd ignore it. But unfortunately, what these people are doing is real, and it affects people adversely in this country and around the world, and that's not good for any of us. I mean, when the foreign policy of this place is a uh, carpet of gold or a carpet of bombs, and we're like, ha ha, or uh, we came, we saw, he died, ha ha, right? Like, this is, it's macabre. It's more, it's like, it is not freedom and, and liberty. It's not physical freedom, and it's not cognitive liberty. And if not those two things, guess what? It's usually a variety or flavor of slavery and servitude that's involuntary. We should have outgrown these ideas by now. But here in the 21st century, we still need an underground railroad and we still need abolitionists because there is still slavery and people are all too willing to accept it and trade in their liberty and freedom by the truckload for a little penny of so-called security. And it's antithetical to thinking. It's intellectually bankrupt.